Well, hey there, Orchard Church. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad that we still get to praise our God during this time of uh, just doing things online currently. Um, but I've been uh, thinking and praying about everyone in our church and just am so thankful that uh, we get to be part of this community, um, just, to, just to come together and worship in whatever way, shape, or form. Um, so with that, we're going to um, kick off. Um, we introduced a song last week called Make Room, and I want to start off again uh, with that song this week. Uh, I just think it's a great way for us just to prepare our hearts and uh, just to kind of prepare ourselves for God to make room um, in our home and our hearts. So let's lift that up. Let me pray for us. Uh, dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for this chance just to sing songs to you. Lord, we thank you for the birth of our Savior, um, and Lord, that we get to celebrate Jesus in this um, festive way. But God, be with us as we face just uh, challenges every day with everything going on with the uh, coronavirus and uh, sheltering in place and uh, distance that is taking place in between individuals, friends, families. Um, um, God, we just ask that you just uh, just unite us and just be present with us in those times. God, if we're feeling this in this moment that we need uh, forgiveness or we need strength or courage or grace, uh, Lord, I just pray that we just sing these songs and just feel your presence that uh, in that peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's worship. We're going to sing Make Room. Sing, shake up the ground. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. tradition break down the walls all my religion your way is better your way is better and i will make room for you 
to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to here's where I lay here is where I lay it down You are all I'm chasing now This is my surrender This is my surrender All right, everybody, we're going to do another Christmas carol. We're going to do O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we are just celebrating uh, Jesus, God with us. And so let's just lift it up, let's sing and uh, just worship God who um, just sent Jesus to walk amongst us, to be with us, and to walk on this earth to experience everything that we experience. And so we have a God who is so complete and so loving um, that he would do that. And so let's worship him and let's just praise him. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Clouds of night and its dark shadows put to fly. In one the hearts of all mankind Bid thou our sad division cease And be thyself a king of peace Rejoice Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to
Pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for this chance to meet together through technology. We pray that you would open our hearts, take away the distractions, and Lord, because we open up your very word, your word that you speak to us, may you use the power of the Holy Spirit to speak truth and transformational life and breath into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I remember a summer that I spent where I was living on a reservation in South Dakota. It was right in here. And it worked with the people living there at the Wounded Knee School District. Have you ever heard of that? Does that sound familiar? The battle at Wounded Knee? Well, it was very, very cool to be able to work there and live among the people. And we would do service projects and work with the kids. And we would bring groups from all over the country, church groups, to work for the people. And so it was my job to kind of coordinate those trips and to lead them. And so one of the things that we would do after a hard day's work is we would go for a hike. So we were in the Badlands, and the, just the hills were just beautiful. It wasn't high up, but we would take this hike. And one of the things that I would do then is there was a couple turns where I would send some of our staff, and we would make sure that the groups found their way up the path. Well, at one of these times that we were doing a hike, I had found myself getting into a little bit of trouble. You see, we would work with these groups from all over the country, and then the people there would come to our groups and get to know and stuff, and it was just so cool. But at some point, um, there was three girls that kept coming to our group, and it was so great. I loved them. They were cool. They were super nice. But we had just kind of said, hey, during this time at night, when we have our worship and just debriefing from the day, after a few weeks, you've seen the things, you've, you've been there. Can you just not be there? Well, that made them mad. So they went back to their families and told the families how mad that they were that I was keeping them out of the, the program that we had. And so two of their brothers took it upon themselves to get masks on and get two by fours and go out to beat me up. So there I was, standing on the way to this hike with groups coming by, and there I was, no one was there. It was just me. And I see two guys coming with huge two by fours and masks on. And they came to me and they looked me in the eye and they said, are you Chad? And I, I I wish, I wish maybe that at this point I had a different way of telling the story. But the truth is, I said, nope, he's up there. And so they left and they went up and my heart just dropped and I was like, oh, I'm taking off. And so the next group that was coming down, I went with them and ran and found the biggest guy that I could. And I just remember just going to the place that we were staying in my bed, and which was uh, a mattress on the floor. And I just sat there and I was terrified because I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't want to upset anyone. I didn't want to ruin anything. I didn't want to get beat up. I didn't want to, I just didn't know what to do. You know what? I felt powerless. And I was scared, I was alone, and, and all through that, I was just like, what God are you doing? I'm trying to help out people. I'm trying to do good, but I'm still not doing it. Well, it worked itself out. Um, we, we made up. Um, the guy did threaten me a little bit more um, as I saw him, um, but he didn't beat me up. I'm grateful for that. 
But I wonder what would have happened if, I don't know, something else. If I just had courage to say that it was me or maybe, maybe that was the right thing, maybe it wasn't the right thing. But when we look back at our lives, there's certain times when we feel powerless, right? We feel just so frustrated because we want to do something. We want to we wanna just be powerful. We want to not feel vulnerable. But here's the thing. Jesus came into this world at the exact right time. And he came in in this time that was so under, like just, just, it was not a good situation, especially as a Jewish kid. And so we're going to look at this story, and I'm going to have my son Hudson read it. And it's the story from Matthew 2, and it says this. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, and the angel said, Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfills what Mary, the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I call my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent the soldiers sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who are two years old and under based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Thank you, Hudson. So, we have this incredible time when you just have to picture what that would have been like. Can you just imagine a young couple? They're living in their house, they just gave birth to their brand new baby boy, and they're just marveling at it, like, oh, look at the cute fingers that it has, look at the eyes, oh, it looks just like you, oh, wow, what an incredible joy. And then one evening, they hear an army come through, the horses and the soldiers, they come through and they say, and they yell, everyone get out here. And so everyone comes out and then they bring every child that's two years and younger. And so this young couple has to bring their child and they go and look and see if it's a boy. And if it's a boy, they kill it right there. What? I mean, as you, as you saw that, there was a cry that was heard from in Rama, a great weeping and mourning, yes. I can't even imagine the wailing that would have been happening. And that, that is actually a quote from Jeremiah 31, where a cry is heard in Ramah, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel weeps for her children, refused, refusing to be comforted, for her children are gone. So this was a prophecy. This was happening. But what happens when we really suffer really suffer deep pain. Horrible, horrible things that are happening. There's, there's two ways to go, really. The one way is we deal with our pain and we get angry and we get bitter and we get resentful. And eventually we get, re we get revenge and war happens. So you have to imagine when Jesus is living his entire life, that memory is in every heart of the Jewish people. Because the governor, their Jewish governor, said that I am threatened by the, the thought of this baby being the king, and so I'm going to kill every single child that's a boy under two so that I can erase that risk. But that sticks in your brain, right? 
because the people are powerless. They can't do anything, but they want to. And they want to form this revolution. They want to get back and they want to get their freedom because they have heard that there is a Messiah, a Messiah that was going to be born. And then they wanted to believe it so that they could take back and that they would once and for all have a good ruler. So Jesus grows up, and as we, we, we see this prophecy that happened, we think back even to Isaiah 7, where it says, Then Isaiah said, Listen well, you royal family of David, isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my God as well? All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. That's my favorite word, which means God is with us. By the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he'll be eating yogurt and honey. For before the child is that old, the lands of the two kings you fear so much will be deserted. So we have these people who are just ready for the Messiah. And they hear of this child that is born, and they're ready. They're ready for this new revolution. But like I said, there's two ways to go. One way that is leading to war and revolution. But Jesus, Jesus said there was a different way. This child came in not as a warrior, but as a teacher, as a rabbi, as a humble child. And so when you feel powerless, you have to think, why? Why do I feel this way? And what would Jesus call me to do? Because my personal self, that anger just feeds in and grows and gets worse and worse. But the path of Jesus is different, right? I remember just being in different natural disasters. Have you ever been in a natural disaster? Well, we have the campfire, this, this unbelievable, terrible disaster that happened right in our neighborhood. And we saw people suffering. We still people see people suffering. We know people that lost their homes. We know people that were traumatized. I also think of the different disasters. I, I was in a flood down in Mexico, where all of a sudden this whole flood came in all over where I was living. Luckily, I was on the third floor, but I was out at two in the morning shoveling and putting sandbags because of this great flood. I remember a tornado when I was on the Pine Ridge Reservation, where the roof of the school that I was living right next to got torn off. Luckily, we were out at dinner, but this tornado, this power, like, was just raining down debris on the place where we were staying. We think of just different things. I've been through a hurricane. Uh, actually, we did cleaned up after the Hurricane Katrina, the aftermath there, and just seeing everything just devastated and just flattened. We also have been in earthquakes. I don't know if any of you have been, but I remember being in a great earthquake down in Mexico on Easter, where everything just started shaking and things started falling off of the shelves in my apartment. And we felt so powerless. Right? And that's the point, is that sometimes we get shaken to our very core because we are not powerful. We don't have power. Right now, as we live through this pandemic, there's so many people that are angry, that are just want to be going after someone. We're mad at ang we're angry at whoever it is, our neighbors or the politicians or whatever it is. There's just this anger because they don't have control. You see, power goes along with control. Because if you can control things, you are the ones who makes the rules. But Jesus, when he came into this world, onto this earth as Emmanuel, 
God with us. He was the one who said, there's a different way. Follow my kingdom. Join my movement. And so the call is this. When we think of Jesus coming into this time where there was anger and pain and hurt, there was all of these things that are being threatened, and the religious leaders were threatened by this new king, and the Romans were threatened by what they wanted to keep the peace because they wanted to keep their power and control. And King Herod, even at this time, was really just cooperating with Rome because Rome was his ticket to keeping his control. And it was just so messy. And so this little baby comes into this time of the earth and says this, I want you to be humble. I want you to join me in my movement. So be bonded to Christ and then be united together, but not in the form of a revolution that you would think of, which is about war and about death and about power and control. But instead it's this, it's upside down, right? It's, it's this baby that's powerless. It's this baby that's been made king, even though the religious people were out to kill him. As a matter of fact, Jesus faced many times in his life when he was the target. He was willing to do that for us. When we think of Christmas, when we think of this next time, uh, these next few days, you got to remember that Jesus came into this world not so that we would have power, but that we would join him in humbly giving up our power so that his power may be made perfect. That we would believe in God and be bonded to him so much so that it changes our lives. And we get away from power and control and hate and revenge and we move towards humbly loving our neighbors, caring for the poor, caring for the hurting. You see, what Jesus was introducing was this way to be healed. And that's, that's the second way. You can either join that path of hurt and pain and, and doing the same things that were, were done to you, or you can choose the way of Christ, where this humble child shows you this humble way to go and follow him, to follow him into the place of healing. If you have those wounds in your heart, you think of those times when you were living in the past and, and something just terrible happened, because terrible things do happen. Storms happen to the good and to the bad, but there's a way in which we can give it to God to be healed. As a matter of fact, I fully believe that God can take any, any situation and turn it for good. And you say, how? Well, I, I gotta say, like some people who have gone through incredible pain, when they are healed, they can look and see those people who have also been hurt and give care. They can empathize. I see so many people who are living testimonies of how God was so good to them and changed their lives and, and took them from this horrible place of, of just not of sin, yes, but like of just pain and hurt and, and just death happening. And, and yet God has taken them and just now, when they give their life to Christ, they start to live. And God gives them abundant lives. And then they're able to give to other people and demonstrate with their own testimonies, there's hope. There's a way to get out of this spiral that's just going down and down. And so that they can live abundantly. 
There's a big difference between what we used to do when we were living for power, when we were living for control, and then when we let go of that. And what does Jesus say? He says, my power is made perfect in our weakness. Does that make sense? No. But I'm constantly reminded of this baby, this baby Jesus that came into this world in this dark, dark time, and he was the light of the world. And he started this little movement by little by little by little of people depending on him and seeing, whoa, the way to follow God is through loving, loving God and loving our neighbors. It's that simple. But when we get caught up in the pain and the hurts of this world and our expectations that were, were not met, then we, we get caught up so much so that it makes our heart unable to love. My prayer for you is that you can allow God into your heart. And instead of, of just fighting that and being rebellious and going away from God and blaming God, that you can allow God in to trust Him to love you. Because when we see the story of Jesus, we, He comes in to pay the price for our sins so that God doesn't have to be this angry person and this punishment person. He, he was saying, hey, I don't want to be like that for you. I want to send my son to pay the price for you so that you can be with me the fun God, the loving God, the kind God. And this love is just going to come to us. And even though we've sinned and we fall short of the glory of God, we are able to, to just confess our sins to God because he's so good. He's so loving. He's so kind. This Christmas, remember that the ultimate gift that we are given is this incredible price that God gave to us by sending his son to take on the humble form of a baby so that we, we could connect, we could relate, and we would be invited to join his kingdom. And because of that, we are grafted into the family, the family of the unbelievably powerful God. Let's pray. God, we just thank you. We worship you. We, we come before your child and we just say thank you. Thank you for sacrificing him for us, for his teachings and his example, his testimony of living his life for you. God, I pray that each person listening to this can also be bonded to you. They can give their life to you. And because of that, this trust and this faith that we have in you transforms us. And so we become more loving, more like you. And then we can rejoice together. God, this Christmas, may that become so true and so real. Not just for us, but for the whole world. Because you are the light of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing 
of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have let me feel the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Sing your goodness is running Your goodness is running after It's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. No, my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Of the goodness of God. Well, God, you are so good, and so we just proclaim that. Thank you for the birth of our Savior, Jesus. We love you, and God, and God we just ask that you just uh, bless us and your presence go with us everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Church on the Street tonight is going to be really special. Um, we're going to have a group uh, from the Mennonite Church going to be coming, and they're going to be bringing the meal um, and providing everything uh, for those who um, come to church on the street. And so this is an awesome opportunity to come and just uh, be part of this great moment tonight. I believe last year they even brought their uh, choir, their full choir, and they were singing Christmas carols, and it was a fantastic evening. So, uh, so tonight it would be great to have you all come and check it out and be part of that. Uh, just an awesome way for us to continue to serve and love God um, in our world, in our community, um, through this ministry of Church on the Street. So love to have you there, 6 o'clock. God bless, and hope to see you soon.